Video 14 is warping some uh, structural images. We've done warping before in two different ways. Firstly, we just used the straight normalize function to warp the EPI functional data. But then when we did some segmentation, we had the option to write some normalized versions of the segmented parts of the structural images. Um, here we're just going to do it on the structural images themselves, the original structural images from our five participants. And we're going to use the regular normalize function available in SPM. Why we need to do this? Well, you can guess for yourself. We'll find out later. An awful lot of uh, segmentation and, and render creation. And uh, we want, we've done this so that we can uh, put data on top of it, put some our statistical results, our blobs on top for better visualization, at least in understanding where things are going on. Uh, there's just one, one last thing we want to do. Despite the fact that we've produced huge numbers of images from our structural um, these different tissue classes and the warped tissue classes and the render files. There's still one thing we haven't got, and that's the the structural image it itself warped into standard space. We've only got the the, the segmentations, uh, so it's quite nice to to have that as well. Also, I want to do something with that uh, to make a sort of honest image, which I'll I'll discuss later. So I'm just going to quickly go back to the normalization, estimate and write option, and here what I want to do is um, for data I want a new subject and the uh, image to a line is just going to be um, the structural image, the original one, the S160 there and the image to right is going to be um, exactly the same image um, and I'm just looking at here. Now all I'm going to do here is um, I want to produce a, a nice warped image, that's fine, um, but also just to show what it's like I'm going to put together the five images from the five participants to see how quickly once you start combining um, warped images it turns into a, a bit of a blur and you can't be sure where different structures are. I want that to be quite high quality so I'm just going to change the voxel size going to to keep it at the original one by one by one resolution uh, and here interpolation I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to whack that up a bit bit just to make it super high um, quality uh, and I'm not going to run that just yet because I, I want to do it on all of the images so where it goes data I'm going to replicate subject one and that's so I'm going to change that to uh, image to align. What I'd like to be able to do is just quickly right click and edit that and change that to an 11. I can't do that. I've got to go into specify. I've got to remove that one and go up to participant 11 structural select done. And the same for images to right. Specify unselect that one. <coughs> back up to participant 11 structural choose the right image done now I, I want to uh, repli replicate subject one again and hang on, let me see what I've got that's that's participant 10 that's participant 11 right, this is the one I changed to make it participant 12 so deselect 10 uh, let's do 12 structural uh, it's the 160 we've got to put in there and then for the image to write, it's obviously just that image, not a whole sequence. So we're on 12 here, structural, 160, done. And then go back to data, replicate subject one again. Here we go, change that from 10 to the fourth one, which is 13, structural, select that one. <laughs> it, here's what you've got to watch out for. If you try and select a new one when one is already selected, nothing happens. It doesn't give you an error. You can only have one selection here, and if you try and add to it, it doesn't do anything. So I've got to make sure I get rid of the current one and put in a new one. Oh, so easy to make a mistake. Um, specify unselect participant 10, put in participant 13, and finally I'm going to replicate subject one again. Um, I'm going to change participant 10 to the final participant, so deselect that one, go to participant 14, structural, select that one, and do it again for the images to right. Deselect uh, participant 14, structural, SBR 160 slice. 
So now, before I do anything, I want to check I've got that right. So let's go to the first one. That's participant 10, participant 10, good. Next one, participant 11, participant 11, good. Third one, P12, P12. Ah, you see, this is why you check. I made a terrible mistake. It thinks it's writing too fast. Ooh. So I've got to specify that, and I've got to take out the number 10. I unselected all by mistake. This should be 12, only 12, so go into 12, structural, specify that one. Huh. Uh, check again, align and write 12, next one align and write 13, and next one align and write 14. So easy to make a mistake, I'll just save that. Uh, normalize structurals. And I'm just going to put that up a bit in object. Okay, and then I run that, and that should only take a few moments. It's going to take a while, actually. We've now finished uh, normalizing all the structural images. So uh, in addition to all the segmented stuff we've got, uh, on top of the, the original structural, um, we've got the warped uh, structural and this uh, y underscore file which is the warping parameters uh, so they could be applied to the image again I've uh, not done anything with um, well, let's just have a quick look uh, to have a look at one of those images uh, just to check that's warped okay and nothing weird going on and this is the warped image note that we um, set it to one millimeter res rather than to the uh, um, uh, two millimeter it normally does it at but it's a smaller file um, if we look at the file size the original structural image is 21 megabytes this warped one uh, even though it's the same uh, resolution one millimeter is, is less than half the size and that is because it's much more tightly bounded because yeah, we're not not interested in the other stuff but we look at it and it looks to be good quality and we don't have any of the horrible uh, smearing and um, there's there are no obvious errors there looking good so even if we zoom in on nearest neighbor interpolation it should uh, we should be able to see oh god it's not bad actually um, lovely 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 so what we actually want to do here is well we'll get to it in a moment what we'll get to in a moment is that you can use these um, warped structural images from your participants not just for overlaying data but I'm also going to take a, an average mean of the five participants to produce a sort of honest average uh, structural that you can use but that's the next video